What's up everybody? Came up here to West Point. It's pretty late in the evening and uh, just figured I would make a uh, few laps here on the CRF 250F. This is the first time I've actually went and ridden trails with it. Uh, if you don't count, just riding around the uh, woods at my house or anything. So, I was hoping to make the exact same loop I made the day that I did the beta test ride, but I'm not 100% if that'll be fully possible. They were going to re-arrow it, I was told, but it looks like it might be doable. So far, it doesn't look re-arrowed or anything. But we got a long ways to go. This is a couple mile long loop. And by a couple, I mean just that too. I do believe it's not any further than that. I got to remember I don't have hand guards, so be careful not to whack the knuckles. And I'm not pushing the pace at all. I'm trying to, I'm in street clothes. I do have riding boots on, but other than that street clothes, so I'm trying not to uh, dump it and become extremely muddy and ruin a good pair of jeans. But this is the more of the pace that this bike was designed for in the first place. Although it can handle a little faster pace than this, but really wanting to get an idea for gearing on this single track as well. On the motocross track or uh, arena cross track, I was riding. Um, second and third gear was good. I pretty much just ran third gear the entire race and was really kind of between second and third and I just settled to run in third gear. When I really should have been downshifting to second in a couple spots. So out here in the woods though, second's pretty nice. You can slow down to a crawl. But I'm trying to get an idea for if a if it would be better to have a uh, one tooth taller front and speed second up a little bit, wrong way. So, if you did that though, would it be too much? Or would you be better off going up a couple teeth on the rear and slowing it down and making it where third gear is, which I'm now in now is where the bike feels at home on the trails and that might be the case because right now I'm putting along in third and I can tell you it feels a little too tall of a gear for how narrow and tight this single track is granted again we're just kind of putting It's kind of seeming like it might be one of those situations where 
you would maybe have to go so drastic on the rear up the tooth that it may just not be worth it. Maybe better off just shifting back and forth between second and third. You're not gonna most likely you're not gonna find yourself finding a a perfect gearing and you know gives you enough speed while also not requiring you to do much shifting and if you did find that perfect gearing as soon as you get off on some more open stuff then you're back to uh, being in between gears or something so much for not soaking up the nice clothes nice jeans so anyway with that in mind now that I'm out here actually riding trails may be best off just with the oh wet socks that sucks it's like the worst thing in the world wet socks but anyway might be best off just unless you've got a very specific style of riding or terrain that you don't really deviate from very much you might be best off just leaving it stock gearing man I can't believe that wet socks I'm also not wanting to push it too hard because I still do not have a skid plate granted this portion of the riding area it's known as the kids loop is not very rocky there are some areas elsewhere on the property that is extremely rocky and rough and would definitely feel better getting a skid plate before I went and rode those areas especially if I was riding at a faster pace than this front tire feels good uh, stock tires front and rear front tire feels pretty good planted isn't slipping and sliding very much again not pushing it rear tire on the other hand leaves a little bit to be desired there's plenty of room in the swing arm to fit a wider tire which if you're going to be doing all trail riding like this would definitely be a good upgrade to make in my opinion the stock tire is just a little narrow and if I had to guess, it's, I haven't looked at the specs on these tires, don't even know what brand they are and model, but if I had to guess, being a stock tire, it's very hard, not necessarily hard, but not a very grippy compound. And that might explain as well why it performs the way it does leaving a little bit to be desired from a traction standpoint. The front though performs really well. Maybe really well is not the right word, but it doesn't leave that much to be desired. It could be better, but it's not a super big deal at this point. Not nearly as much as the back. So, fatter tire on the back. Uh, that might be a solution too, is not only a fatter tire on the back, but checking clearance and seeing if you can go a little taller with the sidewall as well. And that might help out the gearing a little bit. 
make it a smidge taller without actually changing sprockets and wider foot pegs should definitely be on the list of things to purchase as well this wet mud my boots are slipping all over the pegs not really able to get a good bite these MSR boots don't have a super large heel that would really let you lock in to the pegs either to be a heavy bike I would argue a lot of the weight is down low at least it feels like it the bikes very flickable for something that's you know 60 pounds heavier than those betas that I was riding on this same trail just a few months ago but for just cruising not doing any kind of uh, racing great bike click it up into second gear if you're on some tight woods like this and on a rare occasion you might have to tap the clutch but for the most part you can just cruise practice on form standing on the pegs the whole time and I'm sure that lap was way slower than it was any of the betas that I rode so I wasn't pushing it or trying to ride that fast but it was a very comfortable bike handlebar risers also possibly an early upgrade to make just to make it more comfortable standing Whew. we'll catch y'all in the next one